Hello. Today we're going to talk about inserting images into a Word document. Really the subtitle or the real title of this video should be wrap text, but we're going to call it images because that's what it's about. So inserting images into a Word document, there's two ways to think of it. Well, two normal ways, I guess. Under the insert tab, you've got pictures and you've got online pictures. Pictures implies that you're looking at those pictures which are just already on your computer, right? So if you have a digital camera, all the stuff that you've synced up to your computer, that's pictures. That's not as interesting as online pictures. Online pictures is what used to be called clip art. So if you're looking for clip art, you're not going to find anything called clip art. You're just going to head straight over here. And so rather than have this old school clip art library, now you get Bing image search. And why not search for cats, right? Everyone else does. And so I got a little I got a little message down there saying, "Hey, are you, you don't have the rights to reproduce many of these images." Well, I'm just making a tutorial video, um, so we should be okay here. I'll click on that guy, and I click insert, and that's all there is to inserting an image into your document. Now, oftentimes the image is gigantic, so let's talk about picture tools, which is really what this video is about. Um, so there's two things I think you need to know about if you're working with images in Word or Excel, for that matter. One is the size group, right? If you need to resize your picture, typically you want to constrain the proportions, which means, let's say you want to make this thing three inches wide. I press three, I press enter, and it just snaps to. Notice it didn't just adjust, it didn't only do the width without the height. It did the width and it did the height accordingly. It's kind of the same as grabbing a corner handle that constrains the proportions. This wrecks the picture, right? That's pretty much never what you want to do. So. Grab a corner if you're just eyeballing it, but if you're taking a test or if someone's asking you to do it, there's a good chance that they're going to ask you to just set one of the dimensions and you're done. Additionally, there's some pretty nasty stuff down here in this size dialog box in terms of sizing your image relative to the paper. Now, I don't, I'm just not going to do any examples of that, but I do want to point out where it lives. So I would like to point out all these stylistic options. I don't really have a lot of motivation to talk about them. I don't think there's a great, any reason why you should have these things memorized, but know that if you do hover over them, well, it tells you what they're called. These are the kind of things which change from version to version of Office. So the thing that you do want to understand, particularly if you're thinking of taking like a MOS exam or any kind of an assessment on, uh, on Word, just know that these groups exist and they all have particular names, artistic effects, these picture styles are particularly cryptically named, right? This is metal oval. I don't have a lot to uh, tell you about those other than that they exist. Just know that they exist and know if you want to apply some formatting to your picture, it's under picture tools. So we talked about size. I want to talk about wrap text now. So wrap text, by default things are in line with text, which is not very good. I'm trying to move it. Do you see how it's not really moving where I want it to? So the first thing you should do with an image is resize it, then address the wrap text. For this particular picture, here's square, here's tight, here's through. Any difference at all? I, I don't think I noticed one, but uh, now I'm free to move it wherever I want to move it. Notice in 2013, we now have a little guide telling us when you're about to get outside the margin, which is a bad idea. Now, you might be wondering, well, why were all three of those the exact same? Uh, they're not always the exact same. This image just happens to be rectangular, so they're pretty much the same. If you have an image with transparent sides, all right, so if it's non-square, then these do matter. Top and bottom, I'll show you this one. This is one I use a lot. This forces the text to be either above or below it. Very nice way to work with titles. I mean, there's a time and a place for top and bottom, right? I mean. I'd say it's probably one of the less common ones, but it's very useful when you need it. Behind text is pretty weird because there are better ways to do that, right? Namely like watermarks and background images. And in front of text, that's useful sometimes. It just has no respect for the text at all. And you probably wouldn't want to do it here, but yeah, if you, then you may use that one at some time. And so these are the big, uh, if you're working with images and you understand that you need to set the wrap text first, then you're way ahead. That's what this little thing does as well. Although you can see I pretty much never uh, use this, which has the same information as here. I think the reason I don't like that is you've only got a few options there, whereas everything is up here. So you might as well just get used to using the ribbon is my opinion at least. So those are images, right? And so this was really a discussion of the correct way to resize an image. And more importantly, we talked about the wrap text. All these artistic effects, 
feel free to play around with them, and there's a good chance that someone might ask you to use one at some point, but uh, there's no way you're going to memorize them all. So that was my primer on working with images. Thanks for watching.